How's it going everybody? Today we are going to take a look at the MagTrace magnetic shift levers for your BMW. Now MagTrace makes a decent range of these. Um, you know the one I have here is for my F87 M2 so you know obviously the DCT F8X chassis are all supported. They also make a version for the uh, regular 234 series of the F2X F3X generation as well as you know all of the E90s. Um, there's probably some more chassis in there that I've have forgotten but uh, they make it as well. Uh, the premise across all these lines is pretty much the same though. They give you a very nice uh, multi-layer very rigid carbon fiber shift paddle which mounts to the actual uh, magnetic uh, uh, lever unit that goes on the back of your steering wheel. And as you can see here, right, these units have the long paddle mounted on them right now. Um, you know, we clearly just saw the short paddle, so you can go between them. Um, it does come with both. And for like an additional $25 or so, they also make like an aluminum shift paddle uh, that you can uh, uh, do as an add-on or separate purchase if you want a third lever to try. But starting from when you just open the box, you see we have these uh, two short shift levers. Um, you have a hex key for uh, assembling the thing, um, some screws, extra screws for uh, the paddles. And then if we go to the second layer, you can see we have the shift units themselves, as well as the long paddles, right, and it's got their wires. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, some more screws over here. So if we take a close look at the unit itself, you know, you can see there's the magnet over here, which obviously, you know, controls uh, where the paddle wants to be at its resting state. And if we try and pull the paddle like we would in a shift, right, we can hear a nice positive click. Um, it's got a nice tactile feedback. Kind of reminds me of a mechanical keyboard. Clickety clackety. And the unit is pretty simple to take apart. This one I've already partially uh, undone. You can see that there are two screws on this side and another two over here. And then that will let you separate the upper and lower halves, which takes a little bit of wiggling to do. There we go. So I've taken off this top cover part, which you can see there's a magnet here, right? And then we can see in the bottom lever portion, where the other magnet is that mates to it and then this lever flips open to expose the PCB um, this little blue rectangle right here that's the actual switch that the lever presses against to uh, uh, initiate the shift right and obviously this PCB feeds through these wires which go to the plug in uh, the steering wheel now one thing that I noticed is it's pretty easy to take out the magnet here I can just push on it from the other side um, and this magnet is 15 millimeters by about three to three and a half millimeters thick so for whatever reason if you decide that you don't like the amount of force it takes to actuate the shift you can probably just go to Amazon and buy a different magnet a weaker magnet or a stronger magnet whatever way you want to do it um, to uh, to give this a, a different feel so pretty simple assembly overall uh, and once again you know all the screws can be uh, taken apart with the hex key that they include. You can see that these two screws here are what hold the carbon fiber paddle to the actual shift actuator. So if we want to change paddles, we can just undo those two screws, swap the paddle, and put the screws back in. Um, and for some reason, one of my shifters has sleeves over the wiring and the other one doesn't. If it ends up bothering me, I'll grab some paracord and sleeve this one too. So let's go ahead and pop these in the car. Now, one of the things I want to do with the stock shifter levers before I take them out is measure what the pull force is, so the force required to actually actuate them, and see how the uh, mad trace compares. So to do that, I've got this trigger pull tester here. And what I'll do is I'll just put it on the lever, and I'll slowly pull back till it actuates. And uh, looking at this scale right here, so that is... Uh, like 1.625 1 pounds and uh, I've actually measured both of the shift paddles on this numerous times it's incredibly consistent it always comes out right at 1.625 pounds so you know I'm pretty sure BMW has an actual spec for you know the tolerance of how much uh, shift force it takes on this paddle so now that we know what it is in the stock paddles we can take a look at what the mad trace does let's take a look at the mad trace lever pole now that those are in so I'll go ahead and take my 
Trigger pull gauge once again, and so that one, you can see it was right at uh, just uh, just about 2.4 pounds of pull. So definitely uh, uh, more force required to actuate the Mad Trace magnetic levers than uh, the the stock ones. And you know, once again, I've actually done this a few times already, tested both of these. They're both very consistent, right about the 2.4 to 2.5 pound mark. Um, and, uh, well, you can see just how clicky sounding they are. All right, so now we have the paddles in the car. You can see these nice, big carbon fiber things here. Clickety, clackety, everything's uh, sounding great. Um, so, you know, what do I think of them so far? Well, just sitting here, you know, haven't driven on them yet. Um, they obviously look fantastic. How do they feel? Uh, at the three and nine position, they feel great. You know, you got a nice tactile click. Uh, you know, as we saw earlier, the pull force on these is going to be a little bit higher than stock, somewhere around, you know, the 2.5 pound mark, I believe it was. And I think that's actually probably a good thing because I have accidentally double tap the shift on the stock shifters just because they don't have as good of a tactile feel um, and you know maybe they were a little bit too easy to actuate at around that like 1.6 pounds of pull force. Now one interesting thing I thought about this is this these paddles um, they follow the stock paddle design pretty closely in that the angle of this curvature in the upper area is the same between the stock paddle and the mad trace and if i were to try and you know put this stock paddle behind here um, and you would be able to see that they those the outer curvature here lines up very well with the mad trace paddle but that does present a little bit of an issue and that means the paddle actually curves away from the wheel the further up you get so the reach you have when your hands are at the three and nine is less than the reach you have if your hands are up here at two and ten so if you have longer fingers, probably not an issue. If you have shorter fingers, you're going to definitely notice that. Especially like, you know, let's say you wear gloves, which makes your hands stand off a little bit more. So just something to be aware of. If I were to redesign this, I would probably change that angle so that it stayed the same distance away from the wheel the entire length. Now, one of the other questions, you know, or things people wonder is, you know, when you get to this further area away from the pivot point, how does it feel, right? That's a common issue with a lot of aftermarket paddles where they're too flimsy, they flex here, so you either have lag in your shift or you can't even get it to shift. And quite frankly, these are very good, right? This is like a multi-layer carbon fiber piece. I believe it's like three different, three layers of carbon fiber and obviously, you know, the resin and whatever, uh, hardening, in it, hardening it as well. And so when I shift up here, it still feels quite good, very responsive. You know, it feels basically the same as down here. I'm not getting any flex. If you're wondering how high up you can shift with this still actually working, I mean, you can see here, I'm just using one finger just below the positive marker, um, no problem shifting. That said, if I go to where the positive marker is, I'm not getting that shift. But that said, that's not a real world issue because you're never really just using one finger to shift, you're using multiple, and you'd have to have your hand way up here um, in order to try and actuate a shift with your ring finger or your pinky in order to not actually be able to do it. And that's just... I, I, I don't know. I don't think you're ever really going to be trying to do it with just those two fingers anyways. So, you know, non-issue there. This does give you more real estate to get your hand up here and actuate a shift, which is going to be very nice. Now, I will say personally for me, I actually prefer the metal feel right here of the stock shifter over this, uh, you know, uh, carbon fiber resin, you know, plastic feeling that you have. Um, you know, it's it's nothing special. This feels a little bit more premium. Um, so, you know, maybe I should have bought the uh, aluminum paddles for this thing. And, you know, I can, maybe I can in the future. Um, but that's just something, a uh, personal preference of mine. One other thing about these is you can hear they're quite loud. And it's not actually loud on the actual shift, right? When I pull back on them, it's kind of a, a muted sound. But it's really the return that gives you that clackety noise, right? And b what that is, is that's the the lever um, hitting the stop or the actual housing. So what I actually thought of trying is 
well, can I just put something between that lever and the housing to damp that noise? And so like I found, you know, an old gas receipt I had in the car, um, took a little piece of it, folded it so it's four layers thick. And when you pull the lever back, you can actually slide this uh, in between the lever and the housing. And so now you can see that, or you can hear it, that it sounds the same on pullback and release and it quiets it, down, quiets it down so much. Um, now, you know, if I go and do this left uh, shifter, right, that stock with that little gas receipt, oop, just fell out. Um, so, you know, I think this makes it, makes it more pleasant. I'm probably going to do that to the shifter, take a piece of scotch tape or packing tape or something to do the same thing. Uh, if you're wondering, you know, does that affect the pull travel? Does it feel a lot less? No, it really doesn't, at least not noticeably. So, you know, I think it's uh, overall a, a better thing, in my opinion, something I'm going to do and something you may think about doing. Okay, so let's get some drive time on the Mad Trace shifter paddles. And uh, the first thing I should probably mention is I set this up a little bit differently than how it comes um, just uh, for my own liking. And the first reason why is the return clack of that lever going back against the magnet to its home position it's just so incredibly annoying like every time you do that the the pitch it makes is just so salient it just disturbs everything um, and so i i absolutely hated it uh you know it's just so intrusive um i i just really did not like it so what i've ended up doing is if you recall you know i said I'd put a little bit little bit of paper in between the lever and the stop where the magnet is and what I've settled on for that is uh, using a couple different layers of clear plastic tape like just you know pack regular packing tape and I just added more and more layers onto that until the pitch was somewhat tolerable <clears throat> so I think you know I was using a pretty thin uh, packing tape I ended up using something like eight layers but it's pretty easy to do because you can take off that outer housing and stop with the paddle installed in the car. There's just those four simple screws, right? You have two up top, two more on the bottom, and then you can just pull that housing off, put the tape on there, and then reinstall the housing. So, uh, you know, as you could hear right there, the pitch is a lot better for me anyways. It's a lot more muted, but it's still slightly audible. So it's not like I'm losing out on any uh, extra auditory feedback or anything like that. Um, and I'm actually really happy with where it is. Now, some people are also going to ask and say, well, does that like, you know, make the pole length a little shorter? And you know, it, it, it should, but it's so insignificant that me just feeling it tactily, I, I can't tell. But what it does do is it does still put some distance between the lever and the stop or the you know return stop magnet and so that will alter the pull force a little bit and so you know i used my uh, trigger gauge once again to see what that would be and instead of that stock 2.5 pounds that the mad trace paddle comes in it actually lowered it to 2.25 pounds which actually feels a little bit more normal to me because the initial two and a half pounds once again, it just, it, it takes an adjustment getting used to when you put that paddle in the car and you have that much more pull force over what the stock shifter does. And so it felt really weird, like, like I was not shifting when I expected to because I had to add more pull force than I was used to. So this lowers it just a little bit. And honestly, that two and a quarter uh, pounds, it feels a lot more natural to me. So I actually like it more. Now, as you can see in the picture here, right, we have the uh, upper part of the paddle, which has been pretty nice because, you know, if I'm executing a turn this way or something, or, uh, or I'm actually gonna pull down on it, you know, I can put my hand up here, pull down on the wheel for a turn, and you can still see I have plenty of purchase with these uh, three fingers here to make a shift if I choose to do so. Um, and on the uh, other side, or rather the bottom hemisphere of the wheel, I have the same extra capability. If I'm going to use my right hand to push the wheel over for a left hand turn here, I can place my hand down and I still have these two fingers, which I have a nice purchase on the bottom of the paddle. So it does give me a little bit of uh, a uh, better range of motion in order to initiate that shift. However, if I'm taking off from a stop, doing a 90 degree, um, you know, going to the uh, to the uh, right turn, I still end up having to take my right hand and putting it on the shifter itself in order to uh, you know actuate a shift from one to two or something like that. 
Now another thing I have to complain about a little bit is the feel of the paddle itself, right? You know, this is a couple layers of carbon fiber with some resin on it. So you don't feel that nice dry carbon fiber texture like I have on the rest of my, you know, uh, M2's interior from the M Performance trim. Um, and I don't have that cool metallic smooth feeling that the stock paddles have. And so what I what I what it feels to me is actually, you know, this material just doesn't feel as premium. I really preferred that smooth, nice cool touch of the of the metal of the stock shifter here um, over this, you know, essentially clear coated or plasticky feel that you get from the resin over, over the carbon fiber. So I don't think these paddles feel as premium. I think when Matt Trace does release the aluminum paddles in the next month or so, I believe it should be. I'm going to try and snag a pair of those and see um, how those feel. Now, those are gonna be aluminum, as I mentioned before, and I hope they're a smooth texture and not a brushed, because brushed is not going to feel very premium uh, either. Now, one mod to this that might be interesting is on the uh, new, you know, G series of BMWs, G20 and, you know, G80s, um, they actually have a little piece of type of like fabric tape or slightly rubbery tape that they put on the back side of this paddle here and it's got a nice little grippy texture to it so I guess one of the ways I could also try and change the feel of this instead of shelling out for the aluminum paddles is uh, try and find a similar type of material and putting that on the back here uh, on the G series paddles it also adds a, a nice little step or a little index point it feels really good in the hand um, better than I thought it would so that's another thing that maybe you know myself or you might try so even though I've had lots to say of what I don't like about these mad tray shifters there's still plenty that I absolutely do like and uh, first and foremost is going to be that tactile uh, actuation of the uh, lever itself it is very nice and crisp even though I've done a little bit of damping on the return because well you know the initial pull of it it hasn't been modified at all with respect to that tactile feel so that magnetic you know just when you break force in order for that magnet to release is still there it's still very nice um, you know you get that nice clean crisp shift and uh, yeah you know it, it just feels really nice it's kind of like when you go from a capacitive spongy feel keyboard to a nice you know mechanical keyboard um, now that said even with mechanical keyboards you can get switches that are way too clackety like you know the cherry blues are known for and you get others which are more muted but still have that excellent um, you know tactile feel such as the cherry browns or blacks the other thing that's great about these is well, quite frankly, it looks great. I mean, you know, it's a nice, nicely shaped carbon fiber paddle. Um, you know, it matches with a lot of the other carbon fiber I have in the interior right here. Uh, and uh, they've just got a nice sleek and aggressive look to them. So, you know, absolutely, if you're getting these because you want that steering wheel to have that nice aggressive look, you know, with the uh, long extensions, but still have those extensions be functional, which this is absolutely. Uh, then you know the Mad Trace offers a great uh, product for that. And you know, speaking of that, a lot of other products, you know, up in this upper paddle area over here, you know, if you were to press on that, the paddle will flex, but it might not initiate the shift. With the Mad Trace, it's really nice because once again, up here, you can still actuate a shift, and it's perfectly functional. Um, so I, I really like that about this as well. Um, <clears throat> no issues using that extended range. They give it to you and you can actually use it instead of it just being purely cosmetic. So with all that said, how do I feel about the Mad Trace shifters? Well, I think they're a good product, but they're not a perfect product. And you know, at their list price, I kind of would have expected a little bit more refinement. That said, you know, as I've shown you here, you can obviously uh, mod these a little bit to your liking which uh, I wish, you know, maybe they should be a little bit more upfront about that and say, hey, you know, if you don't like this out of the box, here are some things you can try to make it just right for you as I've done for myself. Um, you know, I got in on these at the group buy price, which for that amount, I'm actually, you know, quite satisfied with them. I think these are a good addition to the car and, uh, you know, I look forward to trying them out at the track.